Hello and welcome back to Bookish and welcome back to the content nobody asked for. Um, home all week uh, because of the health care uh, or the coronavirus situation in the United States uh, and around the world. Uh, right now, I'll be home for at least another week. Uh, should get some information tomorrow about how we're going to try to teach uh, the rest of the semester um, through online courses or somehow doing it online. I have to admit this is intimidating for me because despite the fact that I do this, I'm not really familiar with the online software that's available to us uh, through which we can teach. Uh, hopefully my wife will have time in her busy life uh, to, uh, to, to show me. Um, but I thought I would uh, take advantage of the fact that I've been tagged I think four times this week uh, and I have a review video I want to do and then a Saturday hodgepodge just to essentially make a video every day. One video every day this week. Um, whether you want it or not. So this is another tag video. I was tagged by Sean, the book maniac, to do the the longest book I read, 2010 to 2019 uh, tag. Now, fortunately, Sean did not call this the decade uh, tag because, as we all know, the last decade began on two, in 2011. It didn't doesn't end until the end of this year because there was no year zero. Anyway, enough of me being pedantic. You can see I've been away from the classroom too long. This was kind of challenging for me because I'm a bad record keeper. I don't have good reads. I don't put dates in my diary where I record the dates uh, where I read books. So this took some kind of detective work uh, to reconstruct when exactly I read these books. And some of this has to do with the fact uh, or for some of the older books, so the publication date of the books, that let me know what year I read them. If it's a hardback, I probably, uh, the, I read it in uh, the publication year, uh, and there's some other clues as well. Um, so anyway, the first book I read, the longest book I read in 2010, was Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel. Uh, this clocks in at 604 pages. This seems incredibly topical and almost like fortuitous, since her, The Mirror and the Light is a subject of uh, a booktube read-along uh, hosted by Jason over at Old Blue's Chapter and Verse. But this is the book I read in 2010. I know that because it was published originally in 2009, and I know I kind of resisted reading it. Uh, at that point in my life, I was really busy with kids and not doing a lot of reading. So that's my 2009 book. My 2011 book is one of my absolute favorite books and possibly the most featured book on my booktube channel. Mm, and that is The Beauty and the Sorrow, An Intimate History of the First World War by Peter Englund. This is my absolute favorite World War I book. It's one of my, if not my absolute favorite uh, work of history. Um, and uh, it's just great. And I know I read this in 2011 because it was published in 2011. Uh, and it is a brand new hardback book, so I know that's when I read it. The next book required a little detective work. I thought I was going to have to go without a book for 2012, and I was just kind of randomly pulling, you know, thickish books off my shelf when I came across my copy of Cloud Atlas, which I know would drive many people crazy because it has the movie tie-in cover, but it's that movie tie-in cover that let me know that this paperback was published in 2012. Uh, and that that's when I read it. So uh, Cloud Atlas, uh, David Mitchell's probably best known book, though not my uh, favorite David Mitchell book. I've only ever read two, uh, The Thousand Lives of J Jacob Dezoet, or however you say his last name, is actually my favorite. But Cloud Atlas, a really ambitious, interesting book. That's the longest book I read. Oh, in 2012. It has 514 pages. I forgot to mention that The Beauty and the Sorrow had 506 pages. I think all my books have more than uh, 500 pages. Uh, my longest book I read in the year 2013 was The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt, uh, which again, uh, a hardback book uh, that I bought and read in the year in which it was published. I think I had just read The Secret History before this, and uh, I can't remember if I read that because I knew she was having a new book coming out or whatever, but it just worked out. I know this is my 200, 2013 book, uh, and it clocks in at a hefty 771 pages. My 2014 book also took some remembering on my part, and to be honest with you, if all the books I have here, this is the one I'm least sure that I read uh, in 2014, and that's because I, it's uh, The Deerslayer by James Fenimore Cooper, um, and I know I read this sometime in the last 10 years. I'm pretty sure it was 2014. I have uh, reasons for believing uh, that that's true. Uh, Kind of related to 
uh, my kids and going off to college. Anyway, Deer Slayer by James Fenimore Cooper. Cooper, again, an author almost never mentioned here on BookTube. Um, and this book clocks in at a solid... Ooh, how many pages is that? It's more than 600. 662 pages uh, for the Deer Slayer. That was my 2014 longest book. 2015, almost the opposite of the 2014 author. Uh, if, it, if Cooper, James Fenimore Cooper is hardly ever mentioned on BookTube, uh, Har uh, Haruki Murakami is featured here all the time. Uh, this is the Wind Up Bird Chronicle. It's the only Murakami I've ever read, and I know that I read this in 2015. Uh, by the way, the Wind Up Bird Chronicle in my version uh, clocks in at 607 pages. And then I went on a tear, uh, essentially, of reading one novel by Charles Dickens for the next <laughs> three years, starting with uh, Great Expectations, um, which I read in 2000. 16. I know I read this in 2016 because I know this then led me to my 2017 book and that then led me to my 2018 book and you see where I'm going with that. This is a copy of Great Expectations that I got in high school. Uh, it's an old Signet classic. It was almost perfectly preserved because I was supposed to read this book for an academic competition I participated in as a senior in high school way back in 1985. I was supposed to have read it and I didn't read a single word. always felt kind of guilty about that. And for some reason in 2016 I thought, you know what, I should just pick it up and I should go read it. You know, I should read Dickens because I really hadn't ever other than A Tale of Two Cities. And so I picked this up and read it. And then that led me to say, hey, you know what, I kind of like Dickens. Uh, I realize not everybody here does, but I kind of like Dickens. And that then sent me on kind of a a Dickens uh, kind of jaunt, um, but I didn't read the next two Dickens books that I read. The book I read in 2017 that was the longest is David Copperfield, which I, I didn't actually read it. I listened to it as an audio book uh, over a long period of time. And this is when I discovered that I really like to listen to Dickens when I drive. Um, and, you know, David Copperfield is an incredibly long book. I believe it's you know, around a thousand pages or around 900 pages, 800 pages. It's a really long book. It took me a long time to listen to it, but I, I really enjoyed it. I know a lot of people uh, don't like listening to uh, Dickens in terms of audiobooks, but, but I did. And so David Copperfield is my longest book of 2017. And I know last year, uh, 2018, that Bleak House, which I also read or listened to as an audiobook, was my... Uh, longest book of 2018 and I finished that up in time for uh, Victober or a little bit after Victober of last year which is my or 2018 which is my first uh, year on booktube I think I started my booktube channel I want to say in June or July of 2018 and I was already in the middle of uh, kind of listening to Bleak House when I drove long distances and things like that back then and I, I know just happened to know that I figured out that I finished it up around Victober uh, of 2018 and then in 2019 my longest book uh, my longest book of 2019 was volume one of Remembrance of Things Past by Marcel Proust uh, and I, my volume one encompasses the swan's way <clears throat> and within a budding grove which I read all in one month last year for March of the Mammoths and this book is a thousand uh, and eighteen pages long and I just kind of set myself a schedule of reading a little over 30 pages a day every day of March last year and I got that finished uh, and it was rewarding I, I enjoyed it I haven't been motivated to pick up more proof since uh, and I'm not doing so well on my March the Mammoth read this year, but I enjoyed that last year. So there you go. There are the 10 books, the 10 longest books I read from 2010 to 2019. Thank you, Sean, for tagging me. I'll leave a link to Sean's tag video down below. And if there's an originator of this tag, I'll leave a link to theirs as well. I'm sure there is somewhere. I'll try to find that. I didn't do it before filming today. And leave a link to that as well. So I always look forward to your comments in the comment section. Stay safe and thank you for watching.